This is a demonstration video showing how to make four different types of battery using commonly available materials and even how to use a lemon to weld wire together. The first battery we're going to make is going to be from a common lemon. The electrodes are going to be copper metal and zinc. The copper we've harvested from a copper water pipe and the zinc we've harvested from some scrap wheel balancing weights. Then using a knife we cut two slots in our lemon this will make it easier to insert our metal electrodes. When we insert the electrodes, we want to make sure they don't physically contact each other, as this will create a short circuit. With our copper and zinc metal inserted into our lemon, we can use a multimeter to check the output voltage. Using a DC voltage setting, we can attach our positive terminal to our copper metal and our negative terminal to our zinc metal. And the output voltage from our fully charged lemon is around 1 volt. The electrochemistry occurring within our lemon is fairly complicated. However, within a lemon, our negative terminal, the zinc, is dissolving to form zinc ions and electrons, and our positive terminal, the copper, is accepting those electrons and reacting them with hydrogen ions to form hydrogen gas. The electrons are transported from our zinc to our copper using an electrical circuit around our lemon. By connecting two lemons together in series we can increase the voltage, but if we stand any chance of welding metal together we're going to need a few more lemons. So with eight lemons connected together in series we get an output voltage of almost nine volts. However, the current output is going to be relatively low, so in order to weld metal together, we're going to have to store some energy from our lemons. And to do this, we're going to use a DC capacitor bank. By connecting eight lemons to our DC capacitor bank, we slowly trickle charge our capacitors to around 5.5 volts. It takes about 5 minutes to charge the capacitors from the available energy from our lemons. The maximum energy stored in the capacitors depends on the capacitance, which is in farads, and the square of the voltage. So if we could double the voltage, we could store four times the amount of energy. By using some jump cables, we can cause a high current discharge from our capacitors, resulting in a small spark. The wires that we want to weld together in this demonstration are from a thermocouple to create a thermocouple junction. These are two dissimilar metals. Using a copper base plate connected to one side of our capacitor bank, we're going to try to create a capacitor discharge across our two wires of our thermocouple and hopefully weld them together. However, our first attempt unfortunately welded one of our thermocouple cables to one of our capacitor terminals. It was quite a strong welded joint, however, not the one that we intended. With several more attempts, after waiting 5 minutes recharge time between each attempt, we successfully managed to weld together the ends of our thermocouple. Using a thermocouple display meter, if we heat our thermocouple joint using a lighter, we can see a temperature increase. This shows, beyond a doubt, that it is possible to use a few lemons to successfully weld a thermocouple junction together. Our second battery demonstration is a slight variant on the first demonstration in the sense that we're going to use lemon juice. This time we're going to extract the lemon juice from the lemon by squeezing. We're going to use zinc and copper metal again for our terminals. This time we're going to place our metals into a small plastic cap containing our lemon juice. If we connect our metals to a DC voltmeter with the positive terminal connected to our copper and the negative terminal connected to the zinc, as soon as we place these metals in our solution it appears that we get around 1 volt produced. To get a more useful output voltage and output current, we've connected 5 cells together in series these are all connected to our voltmeter. 
Well, we have to wait until we've got lemon juice in each of the cells before we get a voltage output. And with all the cells topped up with lemon juice, we get around 5 volts produced. To show that we can get some output current, we've dimmed the lights and connected our circuit to an LED. And by lifting one of our copper terminals in and out of the lemon juice, we can make and break the circuit and turn the LED on and off. And for our third demonstration, we're going to show a more conventional type of voltaic cell based on solutions of copper sulfate and zinc sulfate, which we happen to have made in a previous video. To these solutions, we're going to add their respective metals. So to the zinc sulfate, we're going to add zinc, which is connected to our DC voltmeter on the negative terminal, and the copper sulfate, we're going to add copper connected to our positive terminal. We complete the circuit by connecting our solutions together using a wick which is soaked in salt solution. This wick allows ionic conductivity to occur and a voltage to be produced. This voltage, amongst other things, is dependent upon the concentration of our solutions. For our fourth and final demonstration, we're going to make a concentration cell. In the setup, we've got two beakers containing copper sulfate solution of near identical concentration. And to each beaker, we add some copper metal connected to our DC voltmeter. By connecting our cells together using a salt bridge, we get a relatively small voltage produced. However, if we change the concentration by adding some demineralized water to the cell on the right, we can see the voltage increase. The driving force behind this electrochemical cell is an equilibrium concentration between the cells. This means that copper is being consumed on one electrode and moving into copper 2 plus ions, and on the other electrode, copper 2 plus is plating out onto the electrode as copper metal. The output voltage is proportional to the driving force or the concentration gradient between the cells. As we dilute the cell on the left with some demineralized water, the driving force is shifted and the voltage decreases and eventually turns negative in response to a change in the concentration gradient. Thanks for watching.